together with Domi. Hello, Domi. How are you doing? Uh, how, what, have, what have you been up to since our last episode? Hey, Jose. Um, great to be back. Um, great to be here together with Adian doing yet another session about live integrations with Google Pay. Um, yeah, busy in the payments world, trying to make sure that developers can integrate Google Pay as, as easy as possible. Um, and I hope today's session will 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 show that. Do you say Adian? And you know, you might be now everyone knows. Because as Tommy said, today we have a special guest. And our guest is we are joined by Joseph Jirish, who works as a checkout lead at Adian. Joseph is here to help us complete a Google Pay integration with Adian and share tips and answer questions that you can use on your own integrations while you do that. So Joseph, do you want to say a few words about yourself? Yes, indeed. Hi, uh, Jose and Domi. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very, very happy to be here. Uh, excited for this stream. So uh, a short intro about myself. I'm Joseph. I'm an Android engineer based in Amsterdam. And I am currently in the checkout team at Adyen. Uh, maybe for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with Adyen, uh, we are a, a financial technology platform. We provide many financial services. One of them is end-to-end -end payments. And my team, which is uh, Checkout, uh, we build open source libraries that uh, allow uh, businesses or merchants to uh, accept payments from their users or from their shoppers, technically. So that's who we are in a nutshell. Thank you for that intro. And thank you again for joining us today. So our plan for today is to explore the multiple paths available to facilitate payments with Google Pay, with the, actually with the API on Android uh, for Google Pay. We have designed these sessions, as many of you know already, to naturally encounter issues, just like a typical integration would. And because of that, we'll love your help when we do. So thank you for being here with us and showing us our support. In fact, some of our, in our earlier episodes, we couldn't have completed the integrations without your help. So thank you again for that. So if you remember in the first episode of this series, we completed a new Google Pay integration on Android using modern tools and libraries and patterns. Concretely, we use the latest version of the Google Pay library, which includes the new Google Pay button, by the way, which we announced at Google I.O. of this year. And we completed the integration using Kotlin. Today, we'll continue to build on top of that. And this time, and in response to popular demand, we'll use Jetpack Compose uh, and, and, and our Jetpack Compose UI element for the Google Pay button that we recently published. So that's hopefully something that uh, uh, makes the integration more similar to what you're building yourself. Tommy, Joseph, do you want to share more about the integration plan that you have prepared for today? Yes, absolutely. So if you want to share my screen, well, let me do that right now. So um, Adyen has three different ways of integrating on Android. One is the so-called drop-in component. One is components, and one is uh, API only. Um, to, for today, we are going to use a components integration. But I pass it on to Joseph to explain a little bit more um, what those three versions of integrations can do. Yes. Thanks, Tom. So um, yeah, to, uh, to explain them uh, quickly, we'll start with the API only, the easiest one. Uh, you only use our APIs and you build your own UI. Uh, that is uh, obviously the one with the most difficult uh, integration, but the most customizable as well. Um, and if we go for this uh, integration, you don't really need our libraries. For uh, drop-in, uh, that is the out-of-the-box solution. So you only uh, configure a few things you can customize a little bit and you configure your payment methods and an out of the box uh, a payment sheet pops up from the bottom with the payment methods that you allow your shoppers to pay with and then we take over from here the whole flow is set up by us and you can add payment methods very easily to it without much effort so uh, the story, question, yeah. question joseph yeah. is it also possible to configure let's say a new payment method in something like the audience dashboard and then this drop-in drop component will automatically show this new payment method? Yeah, exactly. This is the, the, the biggest benefit of the drop-in is that uh, it can be very dynamic. 
and your Android developers or your uh, front-end developers would not really need to make any changes to add a new payment method. Got it. Um, yeah. So uh, can, we can talk about components maybe a little bit. We chose components. It's somewhere in between. We think it's the most valuable for this demo. Uh, it gives you one payment method. So each component is one payment method. We have, for example, the credit card component. Um, we have, let's say, ideal component for uh, uh, who is familiar with it. We have the Google Pay component, which we will be talking about today. And this is a building block, which is somewhere in between full customizability and a fully out of the box, a rigid uh, solution. So okay. we can put it this way, right? Like if you have an application and you, you want the simplest solution possible to integrate payments with Adyen, then you will use the dropping component, right? It's really easy to set up. It's really easy to integrate. And then if there are new payment methods coming, they will be included. Uh, you, you won't have to do anything. And then we can go all the way uh, in the screen to the right side if you need maybe more customization capabilities or you need to have more control over your flow with a little bit more of business logic, then you can do that with uh, with components. And then if you feel, if you need like a completely blank canvas, because what, you do, what you're doing is really a particular, really bespoke, then you will go with the API only. Is that is that accurate? This is uh, very accurate. Thanks for explaining. Great. Fantastic. Great. Uh, so, so Jose, go ahead on. Yeah, if time allows as well, let me just uh, get that out of the way. We'll also talk about additional integration paths as well. And that's also why you're here in the chat. We are, we are uh, looking and, and waiting and expecting your questions. So we can talk about other items or, or solve doubts uh, that you have uh, due, along the way. We'll try to fit as many useful tips as we can on topics. Uh, and again, feel free to use the chat uh, speaking of the chat, let me take the opportunity to say hello to everyone in the chat. Thank you for tuning in. Hello. Hello, Faturai. Hello, Panka. Hello, Nected. I'm so sorry. Uh, the uh, name that started with a knee. I'm not able to read that, uh, <laughs> uh, that, that name, but you're also most uh, welcome. Remember that your participation is not only welcome, but encouraged. Feel free to share questions, reflections, thoughts in the chat. Keeping it always, please, respectful and fair for the rest of our uh, participants. So now with that said, I think the plan is to do a uh, full integration, including backend and client side, which is going to be on, on Android. So maybe Domi, you wanted to say something about that. Yes, thanks. So as Joseph mentioned, we are going to use the components way of integration. And not only that, we are also going to use a new version of the components integration. And maybe if you want to um, say a few words about the new beta release, Joseph. Yeah, indeed. So uh, V5 uh, is our uh, biggest Android release so far. Uh, it's, um, yeah, we're very excited to have it uh, in beta and we are very close to having it in the uh, stable release. We will be using it today. Uh, it brings a lot of uh, features. And uh, the most important one is the sessions flow, which we will be explaining in a little bit. But it's a flow that will uh, technically uh, make the integration on the backend side much easier than it was before. Uh, it also makes the integration experience on the Android side also easier, especially with components. Uh, well, um, we hope that it will, it will reduce the steps that you need to do as a developer. And it has a lot of internal code improvements as well. Uh, so, so yeah, and this is technically it. We, it is in a beta state. We have some uh, merchants piloting it, and we are hoping to have many more that will use it until we move to the stable release. Uh, yeah, hopefully soon. Cool. Great. Thanks for the context. Um, Dino is asking whether we are doing UI with XML or Jetpack Compose today. We are using Jetpack Compose. It's basically the, the UI element for the Google Pay button and the Compose library as well from, from Alien. If you are interested by chance on XML, we have um, earlier episodes in this series with integrations done with XML. But today will be Jetpack Compose. Great. All right. So what we are going to do today is actually follow this guide one-to-one. -one. And as Joseph mentioned, um, this component in, new components integration needs a call to the audience session API endpoint. And we are going to implement this call on the backend side. 
I will try to do it as quickly as possible so that we have enough time for Joseph to uh, explain you how the Android things and Chapter Compose things work. Um, still, let's quickly look at the guide. Um, so as Joseph said, there's only one single API call needed to create a payment session. Then uh, the rest is um, client side. Um, and finally, if we have time, we can also show um, uh, the webhook handling. Let's see about that. All right. Um, so maybe quickly here for the flow, you can see that we have the merchant client, which is Joseph's part, which will be the, the Android application. We have the merchant server that will be my part. So the backend integration doing this session call I just mentioned. Um, Audion returns the session data and the backend then finally passes the session data back to, to, the, to the app. Um, so the guide is super nice. There's a little before you begin paragraph where it says that you need an API key, a client key, you, 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 have, you can set up webhooks, you need a test account. I, uh, I did all this already and we will touch some of those points during the live integration. Um, all right, first things first, let's actually install some API library. We are going with Node.js. And we are really following the guide one-to-one. Uh, -one. So let me do that. All right, um, so it's on MP install. We have never gotten really um, a feedback or, or um, let's say, votes on using a different programming language. It looks like um, a lot of our viewers are comfortable with Node.js. Yeah, I think so. Um, maybe quickly, yeah, so I prepared something already. Um, you can see we uh, in Express have a basic payment sessions endpoint, um, and that's about it. So if I if I actually run the application and if if it would not already run, I'm sorry about that. let's let's start here then. And I um, call the endpoint. You can see that at the moment it just returns this uh, hello ADN payload. Okay, um, back to the guide where I copied the, the npm install command for the ADN library. It will do that now. And I can switch back to the guide. And basically, um, instead of so audience docs here um, tell you to try out a library, but we can actually scroll down a bit because here in step one, when it's about creating the payment session, it actually sh shows you the code for, for it directly. So you can see it down here. What we need is actually this code. On that note, sorry, Domi, we have a question from Cedric, uh, which says that whether we can use the payments endpoint instead of sessions with the uh, beta version number Five, probably a question for you, Joseph. Yeah. Yes, so uh, absolutely. Uh, so to explain it a bit, the, the flow that we had before was uh, called the three endpoints, and now it's called the advanced flow. And it used payment methods and payments and payments details. This flow will not be removed. It's very essential, and it will be still used by many people. It's still supported by V5 and, and will stay uh, that way. But uh, sessions is an additional integration uh, yeah integration path that we added thank you hopefully that answers cedric back to you Domi. thanks yeah so i'm following the guy copying in some code um so what i did is i added dependencies um create the client and a checkout um const uh, as as recommended by the guide and also i'm bringing in the audience api key from the from an environment variable you can see here um actually what comes into my mind for to in order to use the environment variable i need some i need the actual dependency which is dot env and then i should be able to use it Um, so then something like that. Okay. 
maybe not like this. Sorry about that. All right. And then uh, again from the guide, um, I'm using the checkout of sessions API call as um, uh, Joseph described the 5.00 um, um, component version needs to use the sessions API, but you can also use the, the, the payments one as just described. Um, and I believe from the docs there, what I also need to do is, um, I think it's actually payments api.session when I checked last, yeah. All right, um, we, are call we are using the SDK to call audience sessions API with an amount, a currency, um, and the reference. And for the return URL, um, it's actually not needed in our case now because we will do a mobile integration. But for now, um, the sessions API has the return URL as a mandatory parameter. And finally, the merchant account you is, um, is the account you can find in the audience dashboard. Um, on the top right, top left, excuse me. So in our case, that's Google 338. So let's put in this in context, Tommy, just uh, to make sure that we are on the same page. Yeah. This would be this would be the action that would be needed to initiate a payment process. And that can also, and I guess generally will be started in some way from a client, like assuming that we have a shop, for example, and one of our customers is, is buying something there. Once they have selected an item or they have a card and we know the amount, then in that moment, we will call, we'll call our backend and then in our backend, passing that information, passing the amount, the currency and references, we will create this session that you're creating so that we can send it back to the, to the client. Is that right? That's exactly right. All right. Thank you. Okay, um, let's quickly switch back to the guide to see if we did it right so far. Um, so I copied this code. Um, we can see that the response will contain the two interesting parameters, session data and ID. So for now, um, I will quickly uh, copy this one for me to reuse in, in the code. And in addition, you can see later on in step two when Joseph will take over in a moment, um, what's also needed is the client is a client key. The client key is also something you can um, get from the from the audience dashboard, and I will show this to you in a minute. So, the response. Let's quickly do do it like this, um, and get some params from the response. Um, all right. So. What we are going to do is we return um, a JSON. And um, we return the needed parameters. As you can see, this is what, what's getting returned from the actual ADN call. So this is the, the body uh, I'm receiving uh, here in this response payload. And what we are interested to send back to the mobile client finally is the session data. So session data, response, session data, um, and the ID as we just saw from the guide, response.id. And then some other stuff, for example, let's let me switch back to the guide quickly. So again, in step two, when uh, implementing the client side, you need the amount. So we can actually also return um, the amount, I guess. But for now, we will for sure, because they are required, return shopper locale, environment, and client key in addition to, um, to session data and, and ID. So that it's easier for Joseph in, in a minute to actually instantiate the, the component with those parameters. So let me do that quickly. Um, so we have a shopper locale, and we we will um, we will hard code these values, those values. Shopper locale. What else? Um, I forgot already. 
Um, Question data, maybe. We can ask also our, our, the owner of the Android app today, which is Joseph. Mm -hmm. Joseph, what do you need? All what right. do you want us to send you? We can also send you all the things. Yes, send all the things. <laughs> so uh, what I would need is the client key, indeed, uh, or which uh, would be called, I think, client secret on the um, API. We would need the environment, uh, which then signals what environment are we going to use. Um, yeah. Yeah, we would need the shopper locale or locale, and we would need the merchant name. Um, that would be displayed. We would need the session ID and session data. Okay. What well, maybe while Domi finishes this, just for everyone maybe to to understand, the client key is let's say a hash or let's say a an opaque blob that identifies a concrete client that is managed on the RDNN and it doesn't change. Is that right? Yeah. The other recommendation would be to fetch it from the back end, right? Instead of hard coding it because that's a sensitive yeah. value, isn't it? Of course, yeah, indeed. And uh, the client key, technically we, there are two payment, there are two requests that will be sent to the RDN APIs. There are the requests that you will send from your back end, which is what Dom is doing now. But then after you make the sessions call, you send the session over to the client and the client will continue the flow and will make extra payment, extra API calls to the uh, checkout backend. And these payment calls need to be authenticated using the client key. So uh, it's definitely not recommended to hard code it and uh, you probably should send it to, uh, yeah, a typo. <laughs> Yeah, send it over in the This is the beauty of, uh, of uh, I love live streams because of this. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, we can fix that typo on line 29 and continue. Thanks a lot. This is like per programming, but like to the, to the highest degree possible. Thanks, Mohammed. Yeah, um, good point, Joseph. So I'm also loading the client secret from, from an environment variable. So again, here, uh, audience API key and audience client secret both can be fetched from audience dashboard. So this one, like both of them are under developer options in audience dashboard. Um, good. So this, this should do it for a very, very basic uh, implementation. So again, um, we are using, um, uh, audience SDK, audience Node.js SDK to, to do a sessions API call. Um, and then the, in the response, we are getting the two most critical parameters, which are session data and ID. And then um, for the others, we either hard core them and for the client secret, we, we load it from the environment variable. So if I-, I is, is pointing out correctly that on line 25, we need to use REST instead of response because response is what we get back from Arian and REST is what we are sending back, right? Oh yeah, stupid mistake. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. You have um, Domi, by the way, uh, you're using .env, so your secrets are being populated now from the environment, right? Uh, you have multiple multiple ways of, ways of doing that with .env, uh, but Cedric is asking, how is it possible that you only have the, the name of the variables in your file? Uh, it's, ooh, I forgot. I think it's, an, think it's a VS Code plugin. Right, but I think in this case, it's being popular to your environment. In any case, there's there's multiple ways of uh, fetching them with .env. Uh, if you take a look at the uh, the config, it's in the upper part of the, the uh, of the README in the GitHub uh, project, Cedric. You you'll find all the options available. Yeah, so Thanks it's question. it's actually you see I'm using a VS Code plugin to actually black out the actual values of of the secrets. Oh, the secrets are there. there. Yeah, yeah, they are there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. Um, so the app runs. Let me do the same call again and see if it works. Okay, it doesn't work. Let's see what we are missing. Um, Maybe it's payment sessions, not sessions. Um, no, it should be sessions. But are you calling the payment sessions endpoint or only the slash sessions? Oh, payment sessions, yeah, that looks good. Yeah. 
Um, what am I doing wrong here? Let's see if we see something in audience um, API logs. What's the error though? So we can um, start taking a look. I'm not yet. Um... Oh, but it looks like it was successful. That's our call. Is that from now? Yeah, it looks like now. Um... So that you get the response right, but then it's failing maybe on returning the uh, the blob bag. Can you, so we can see the error that- um, There is none. Expressed. Unable, unable to make, oh, there was an error there, right? Maybe that's old. Oh, that's an old one. Okay, yeah, oh, response is not finished. Oh, I think I forgot to save. Okay. We're not we're not using response or JSON anymore, right? No, save and try again. Yeah. Okay. Looks a bit better. So yeah. This is actually what Joseph will need. So you can see that it returns the secret now. Um don't worry, it's a test secret, so it's fine. Um, it returns environment. It returns all the all the data to um, to the client, and I think we are ready for Joseph to take over uh, to integrate against this endpoint. Let's see how many calls do we get against this session data from our audience in the ADN dashboard, Tony. All right, going over to you, uh, Joseph. <laughs> all right, thank you. Well, let's do Android now. The backend is ready. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it took so long until we got to Android. Yeah, no worries. All right. So uh, let's do some work on the Android side. Uh, I'm going to tell you first what do we have here in the app. We have some pre-made code to make it easier to for the integration. We have a data layer that will simply call the API that Domi just built and do some mapping to make it easy for us to process the data. And we have a skeleton of an app in Jetpack Compose. So we have a checkout screen where you supposedly will have a checkout card or whatever you have, but here we will only have uh, two things, a loading spinner while we are doing any network operation and a status text that will show success, error, uh, any status we wanna show. Uh, we will build on top of that. And we also have the view model and inside the view model, there is the checkout repository that will allow us to make the API call and uh, flow that will uh, be observed by the composable. And that's pretty much it. We, with that, we can uh, we can start. So the plan for the demo is to um, build two uh, main uh, tasks. The first one is to show the Google Pay button. And the second one is to launch Google Pay and complete a payment. Joseph. So, yeah. Joseph. First things first, what IDE yeah. are you using? I am using Android Studio. Uh, let's see which one. This is after Giraffe for sure, because you I'm have the new Giraffe. IntelliJ UI. Yeah, it has this yeah. kind of cool new uh, integrated UI that Tommy likes so much. I do. And <laughs> also in the chat, you can see that Arnom Wiz Gaming was asking about it. Ah, yeah. Nice. Android Studio Giraffe. It's not, is, is that the latest at this point? I'm lost with the betas now. I think there's a new beta, but this is the latest stable release, right? The latest stable, yeah. Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. All right, Giraffe is it? But I don't have the latest emulator. Well, at least not the <laughs> series. I'm, yeah, big fan of Pixel it's 2, so cool. I still use it. <laughs> That's like yeah. from what? 2000 and, I don't know, 15? I shouldn't say anything if I'm not sure. Nostalgia. Uh, Nostalgia, as long as it, as it works, then it will be okay. Perfect. All right, shall we get going with some uh, of the Android implementation? Still okay, it. so, yeah, perfect. So the first part of the demo would be to show the Google Pay button. And let's start with the Gradle dependencies. So I have already all my dependencies for Compose, Retrofit, and I will we will not be using docs like Domi did because our uh, current documentation is a generic documentation that will 
work for most components, but for Google Pay, we need a few more uh, things and uh, these docs will be available definitely with the stable release. So for now, I will be copying some stuff from the notes, especially uh, these uh, dependencies. So to explain them a little bit, this dependency is our Google Pay component, and this is technically the uh, base of it and how you can integrate with it using activities or uh, XML. And we recently built a wrapper uh, that allows you to use Compose with our components, and this wrapper is still quite new, and I don't think anyone has used it in live yet. So we will be demoing it for the first time, uh, which I think for me is very exciting at least. And uh, and uh, yeah, the, the idea, the, the thought behind this wrapper being a separate one is that if someone doesn't want Compose in their library, they don't need it. Maybe it will give you any build issues or whatever, then you can still use this one uh, by itself. And we have this nice wrapper that uh, provide, is provided by the Google Pay uh, team that allows you to use the Pay button with Jetpack Compose, their Pay button with Jetpack Compose. We have, Joseph, an interesting question from a random user, literally. Yeah. Um, they're yeah. asking whether <laughs> we need the additional dependencies we're using to drop in SDK. So I, I think that probably the answer is no. What do you think? Uh, with drop in, you would need, instead of Google Pay here, you would need drop in. And if you want to launch it with Compose, you can here also write drop in Compose. You would not need this dependency because that will be handled inside of drop in. Uh, but you will need these two. And uh, in all cases, you don't definitely need the uh, Compose uh, wrapper for drop in. Uh, you can still use it without it, but it's nice to have it indeed. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you for the question. Hopefully, that answers. OK. so. We will do a Gradle sync, and then we will start writing some code in the view model. So the first thing to do here would be to call the API that uh, Domi just uh, implemented. So we'll create a function, and let's say we want to need Google Pay. And we will call the repository. Uh, the checkout repository, and we will fetch the session. This, I think, needs a suspend because it makes an API call. So we will make this call on the init block. Uh, quick one, Cedric. Cedric Finance, I saw your I saw your advice on using Google three three eight instead of Google three three eight e-commerce a merchant name. Um, I showed the wrong merchant ID in the in audience dashboard, so it's actually uh, Google 338 ecom. Sorry about the confusion. Does that mean that you have uh, accounts for all the way to zero, Google 337, 336, 335? No, no. I think <laughs> this was actually um, assigned automatically when, when signing up on, on audience test account. Oh, OK. Sorry, Justin. All right, uh, then, so here the API would return uh, this object, which is Google Play Session, which if you look it up, it's, it matches what, uh, what Domi sent from the API. And this can be null for the, the purposes of uh, this demo. Uh, if there's an API error or whatever, it will be null. So we don't need to handle the error right now, but definitely we should handle it later on. Um, so we have the session now coming from the API. The next uh, step would be to configure Google Pay. Now, uh, when we were in the beta integration guide, there were some uh, mandatory parameters. So the first one of them is the Google Pay configuration. So we will start with that. The Google Pay configuration is a way for you to specify what do you need from the Google Pay component and to customize um, whatever parameters you need to send. And the three mandatory um, parameters are the shopper locale, which we have from the API, and it's used to, to uh, localize uh, your strings and display whichever language you, uh, you want. And uh, you can definitely use the device one if you pass a context instead of shopper locale, but uh, usually your backend will be also passing a 
specific shopper locale so you can match it and uh, use it here um, and we need an environment so uh, the environment is uh, which backend uh, which environment is the uh, checkout api uh, the, the the checkout sdk here that we have is gonna call so if we look at the environments we have for example the test environment that you usually start with when you are building your uh, initial integration then you have all the live environments and you would should switch to the live environment when you are in production so uh, that's why you saw Domi first uh, use the, the test environment. And we have the client key, um, which is needed for the authentication of the calls coming from the SDK. So these are the three mandatory uh, parameters and these are enough for us to continue. But if you want to configure Google Pay furthermore, you will see that there are a bunch of other parameters. For example, we have set merchant info, Google Pay environment, allow credit card, allow prepaid cards. And if you're familiar with the Google Pay uh, API documentation, you can see that there are two requests internally that can be done, uh, which are called is ready to pay and payment data request. And these two are the actual uh, requests that uh, will make the payment. And they can be customized with a bunch of configurations and these configurations are reflected in here so for example if you need if you want to require uh, your users to use a billing address you can set here set billing address required and it will be reflected automatically uh, joseph regarding the client key i believe random user is right um i'm using client client secret as the response do you somehow yeah. remap it yeah indeed i do remap it uh, okay. internally yeah all right uh, thanks this one yeah thanks but thanks for that um all right and we are actually going to use one of them which is the merchant info and the merchant info allows you to display information about the merchant and in this case we are using internally the name which uh, is now test merchant and we have the configuration nice so this step is done so will the alien sdk under the hood take care of calling is ready to pay a load payment data or we'll have to do that explicitly right now uh, so we will not be interacting with the google pay uh, library uh, with uh, the is ready to pay request or the payment data request at all we only and will interact with the pay button for now the pay button is not part of the our library but uh, it is easy to integrate it with our library however to check the availability of Google Pay, you can directly use our library uh, and it will under the hood make uh, the, the request, uh, yeah. which which I will I will be, it, it is the, the next part of the integration, um, but uh, let, let's continue for now with, with this. Um, so the next thing would be to, uh, now that we have the session, we need to initialize it. So there is, uh, a way to initialize it, uh, which is called session checkout session provider dot create session, and this one requires a session model and a configuration. So we do have the configuration. We only need the session model, and the session model is just a model that looks very much like what we saw on the back end. And this is the session ID. No, I wrote the wrong thing. ID equals Pay session dot session ID and session data is pay session dot data. And these two are the exact same thing that you get from the sessions call um, on the back end. So you technically forward them as they are and you send them to the SDK. Then when we send them here to the SDK, uh, the SDK will take this data and will initialize the session and we'll return a result. If we look at this result, it can be a success or an error because it is an API call. So, um, so technically we need to check what is the status of this result. And here we see if it's an error, we need to handle it. And if it's a success, we can then return an object called checkout session. And this is what we need to continue the flow. 
Awesome. Maybe Jose, um, I saw yet another interesting question by a random user while Joseph is, is working. Um, how are we linking our Google Pay account to, to Audion SDK? Um, maybe I can try um, on this one and maybe jo uh, Joseph, you can help me. Um, I think you don't. So you will see in a, in a minute when, when, when Joseph finishes the transaction, um, as a user, you would you would actually use this application Joseph is just building and then click the Google Pay button. And then um, behind the scenes, we check on our side if, if you have an, uh, have an account and then show your cards on file inside the Google Pay sheet. Uh, maybe so a random user is referring to me as a developer or merchant. How am I linking my Alien, let's say, SDK maybe. integration with... Uh, with Google Pay. Maybe you can clarify random user, or we can answer both. You already answered the consumer one pain. Yeah. That uh, I can answer the, well, I don't know if I can answer the other one because I don't know how, how the linking is being done. But basically, as, as I guess you're coming from the fact that on Google Pay, you will have a merchant ID, and the merchant ID uh, needs to be included, especially for production calls, as part of your requests. So, how do we do that when we are using the Adian SDK? Yeah. I personally don't know. Do you know, Joseph? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. If you, oh, well, yeah. then, then while you work on it, I'm going to take a look because th there has to be a way. Otherwise, uh, production calls wouldn't, wouldn't go through if I, yeah. if I understand correctly. Yeah, it, it could be a part of the documentation. I'm, I'm pretty sure it should be there, uh, the page that... Um, I'll take a look while you yeah. continue working. Yeah, indeed. So, but if you if you're a developer and you do an application and you um, go ahead and use the Google Pay and Wallet console to ask for production access, what we do there is actually to whitelist your Android package name. So that's that's how you get um, production ac access to the Google Pay API. So in in the Google Pay and Wallet console, you would see your own app package name. And then you need to submit a form, uh, and then we can whitelist your application for production. That's right. Maybe we'll use the uh, merchant ID for ver verification purposes on the web, Correct. with together with the domain name on Android. Uh, the signing key and the package name serves as a means of authorization, so that's sufficient. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Yeah. Great question, by the way, on the user. Thank you. All right. All right, Joseph. Um, okay, let's continue to the next step. Uh, so now we will get the last object we need, which is called the payment method. And to explain this a little bit more, why is this needed? So the, the payment method is uh, when you create a session on the back end side, you specify which payment methods uh, are included in this session. So you can say, I am allowing credit cards, I'm allowing Google Pay, I'm allowing PayPal. Blah, blah, blah. And on the client side, uh, you need to specify which payment method are you using because one session can be used for many payment methods. That's why in here, we need to also fetch which one do we need. And we already have a utility for that. And you need a string, which we call the, the payment method type, but we do have an enum that will help you. So in here, you can fetch the payment method and it can be null, of course. So we can also handle the error later on. I feel like I really hate handling errors, don't I? Yeah, you, you're not in the mood today. There's a lot of yellow. <laughs> I will handle one. I will I will handle one. I, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> you're not the only one, Joseph. <laughs> yeah. All right. So why did we do all of this? Definitely, uh, we called the API. We got all the parameters from that. But now this is where the important call comes. And this is where we need to check whether Google Pay is available on the device or not. So to do that, we can use our Google Pay component, which has a, an object called provider. And the provider is technically the uh, object that creates the component. But before creating the component, it also has a way of checking whether it is available for use. And this goes to all our components. Uh, among them Google Pay. So what we need here is four parameters, the application context, the payment method, the configuration, and a callback. So the application context, we can get it 
because we have an Android view model here for this reason. The payment method, we have it here. And the configuration, we have it here. Maybe it's easier to call check Google Pay availability faster with the payment method and the Google Pay configuration. And I really love Android Studio for this. And this will and tell us whether Google Pay is available on that device for that user. Can return true or false, right? Indeed. So here we have a callback, and this callback will will define whether it's available or not. So we can implement the callback. We see it here. And in the callback, we have this method that will say is available or not. So what we can do is we check if it's available. And we tell the UI, otherwise we- I say come in already, we, Joseph. We handle an error that will actually, I will actually do. All right. Now uh, that, that caught me by surprise that we're handling <laughs> this one. Yes. Great. And what so you want to do if Google Pay is not available is, is not show, avoid showing the Google Pay button because the user will not be able to pay with Google Pay. Just provide other means of payment to make sure that your uh, customers, your users have a, a delightful experience. Um, time for another question. Ankit asks, please cover the things which need to need to be encrypted. Um, none of none of the things because Google Pay works in a way that um, after the user completes the, the the process, so selecting a card on the Google Pay sheet, we will see it uh, in a minute. We return an encrypted token to um, the application. And then the application, and in this case, audience SDK, forwards it to the audience API and only audience, because um, only the PSP can decrypt the token and use the actual card to charge the user. Yeah, so there is a key that has to be exchanged between Google and Arian. So only Google can encrypt the payload that Arian can decrypt. So you don't have to worry about security in this context. Correct. Thanks for the question. All right. Now what do we do uh, if, the, uh, if Google Pay is available? So if Google Pay is available, we do the, we need to show it on the UI. That's it. So we have the UI state here, which has a loading spinner or a status text. We will add another possible uh, outcome, which we will call Google Pay button. And this is another state that we can do. And we will simply tell the UI that you can now show the Google Pay button. So if we go to the UI, we can see here that in my initial uh, checkout screen, composable, I am handling this and this. So let's maybe add a new composable for the Google Pay button. And we will use the pay button, which comes from the Google library. The on click will not be handled for now. This is for the next step. Allow payment methods. This will come from your back end. But for the sake of this demo, we have hard coded it here. There's a bunch of other things that we can customize. For example, you can set a theme. I will use a dark theme. Yeah, so maybe to jump in here quickly regarding allowed payment methods, make sure you use the same allowed payment methods payload as you would use when 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 calling load pay payment data. Um, the reason why the pay button library needs the allowed payment methods here is that um, the button can actually only show the payment methods you are interested in. So, for example, if you want to accept Visa and Mastercard but not Omex, um, it would not be nice if the user still also sees uh, Omex on the button, as an example. And as Joseph said, um, of course, it would make sense to load this payload so they get allowed payment methods um, pay payload from the backend. But yeah, as he mentioned, for the sake of this demo, I, I guess it's it's good like this. Indeed. And in here, <clears throat> we can add the last bit. And we can 
show the Google Pay button. Uh, no, I called the wrong one. And yeah, I think that's it. With, with this now, we have a button that will show or an error uh, that will be displayed if we do not have uh, Google Pay available on the device. Right, so let's be sure that we have all the pieces. Uh, Domi, we have a function published as a backend with the code that you wrote. So uh, when uh, uh, Joseph runs the app, that should be able to make a call successfully, return the information, and populate the Google Pay, sorry, the Adyen SDK and the Google Pay library. So if that's all set, we can give it a try. Should we try the button on its own before the, the Google Pay? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. I want to see how let's the pixel two look like. No, let's hope my oh, eyes uh, There's no Chrome, so. Mm -hmm. oh, let me hide this. Moment of truth. And that's it. Yeah, we have it, and it it was very fast. So let me retry it. If we go here, we see a loading spinner, and then the button. Pops up. I have to say, Joseph Domi, we have to uh, rethink our strategy. We make it look too easy if mm -hmm. this always works at first. Not not saying that because of the library, which is actually very easy to integrate, but the fact that we are doing this on a live stream. So, yeah, everything is working fine. So, well done. Nice. All right. Shall we move to the next uh, step then? Yes. Okay. Then the next step is the actual payment because right now we only have a button. So to do the actual payment, we will need the Google Pay component. Uh, you saw already something similar, which is the Google Pay component availability, but now we will have to get the actual Google Pay component. I'll explain a bit what our what are our components. They are classes that contain the payment logic and uh, anything you need, for example, uh, to in, in Google Pay, it will be interacting with the Google Pay SDK. With credit cards, it will be uh, encryption, it will be validation, uh, formatting, things like this. And uh, these components usually interact with UI elements, views or composables. And uh, that's why they are built as view models. And uh, view models are a very powerful tool uh, to interact with UI. And our components are view models for this reason. And that's why you need to initialize the component on the UI side. So uh, we need to do that in decomposable here. So uh, let's uh, let's maybe take a look at uh, how this will, how, how our component looks like. Maybe while you get that going, we'll take a couple more questions. Cedric is asking whether we can, or whether everything that we need to do to use test is change the environment test. And my answer would be yes. If you changed your environment to test, then the no real transaction will happen. You will still be able to select the payment method uh, and you'll be able to send that to, to Arian as well to see the transaction and, and test the whole integration end to end. In fact, we recently released uh, the ability to see Arian test cards in the payment sheet for Google Pay. So you can do a entire automation flow in which you can do it both manually and, and automated tests, but basically you can test the flow end to end in a way that, for example, if you want to test a scenario with uh, where a card has no funds, then you can use Arian's error cards to make the transaction that will generate the error and you, you'll be able to confirm that in your backend as well. So again, it's a, it's a holistic uh, set of tools to help you uh, test your integrations before you go to production, not only the successful cases, but also the, the errors. And thanks for the question. And one more, he asked some time ago, hopefully you're still around, he, whether we're going to do one in Java. Uh, being Kotlin, the, uh, the most widely used language for Android development, and now the recommended language as well by, by the Android team, uh, we can organize a future episode in Java. We'll need some, some upvoting from the, uh, from the chat and Twitter and all, all our social channels. But if we get enough uh, 
if we get enough um, shouts for it, then yeah, we'll, we'll be happy to organize one in Java as well. Thank you, and back to you, Joseph. All right, then, um, so we were talking about uh, the Google Play component and how we can uh, initialize it. So if we use this method that was, will uh, looks like this, and it looks the same, by the way, for all our components. So here you would have card component, for example. It will need uh, these parameters. So checkout session, payment method, Google Pay configuration, we have already seen them, and we already have them in the view model. The component callback, this is needed to interact with the component. So uh, most of the times, it will either uh, be fired when there's an error or when the payment is done to tell you that the payment is finished. And this key is a unique key. So you can consider it as a, a payment attempt key. So let's say you are you want to, uh, the screen rotates, you don't want a new Google Pay component, you obviously want the same one. So you can use this key to make sure that you have one per attempt. Um, so we need this data in here. So uh, maybe let's uh, create a data class and put all of this inside it, just to reduce the cluttering. So, Let's call it maybe Google Play Component Data. And I have copied it already so that we don't take it one by one. But technically, one of the most precious, yes. precious developer tools. I don't paste. want to import them all the same way. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Either you copy the imports or you just like command enter them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have all of them now, and we can pass it on to this method. And maybe we can do something like with. And there we have it, yes. So now we have a method to get the Google Pay component. And anytime we need it, we can simply call this method and it will return the same Google Pay component always. Uh, so where do we need this Google Pay component? We need it in here. Because as we did before, we skipped the part of the on click. And this is what's needed to uh, launch the Google Pay process. So uh, this is where we need the component. And which means that we do need to send the Google Pay component data somehow from the view model to this composable. So let's go ahead and add it in here. And then we will need it here, I guess. So let's also add it in here, which means we go all the way back to this object, change it to a data class. And I think this has to be a val. And we go back to the screen. And how do we read it? We read it from checkout UI state. Dot go back and it. All right. So now the view model can send the UI, the Google Pay component data, and the UI will be able to initialize the component with it. So what we need to do is to add it on the view model, indeed. So we go here, back to where we started. And you see here, this is complaining now because it needs the Google Pay component data. So how do we get the Google Pay component data in here? Um, well, all of the data we needed is here, the Google Pay configuration and the checkout session and the payment method. So we can, and we need to pass it on all the way to this one. And since we have a callback, maybe the best way is to cache it in the memory somewhere. somewhere. So let's do that. And here we can finish, we can set it before we start checking for the availability. So we set the checkout session. What else do we need? Payment method, Google Pay configuration, callback, and a key. Well, the key for now, maybe let's hard code the key. Um, 
for the sake of this one because we don't have one. But you should definitely use it as we explained before. So now we need to implement the callback. So we can just implement it and we will get these three methods. And these three methods are the final outcome that can come out of the group a component, but we will ignore them for now because this will be the final, final step of the integration. Great. Oh, quick question. Random user is asking whether you define, how do we define Google Pay availability? Um, will it always be available in tests? No, because the availability is a function of a few things. The account that is using, um, that is locked in on that Android device on Google Play services. Uh, so based on that account, whether that account can make payments, um, the uh, is ready to pay may return true or false. The version of Google Google Play services itself would be a factor as well. And I do believe there's a minimum on the Android OS, but, but again, that's most likely enforced by Google Play services. So I'd say these two mainly. And um, as you can see, these two are definitely uh, checks that will be done or can be done in the test environment. So you get uh, a good indication of what accounts, what devices, what versions may will work and which ones won't. The same behavior should reflect on production so that you have no surprises over there. Let me know if that answers and thank you again. Okay, so now that we have our Google Pay component data, uh, we are ready to implement the click. Listen. So we have a method called start Google Pay screen and this one needs an activity and the request code. So internally, this calls something uh, inside the Google Pay uh, API. If you're familiar with it, it's called auto resolve helper. And uh, we pass on these two parameters to it and we get the response back in on activity result. And uh, I think uh, you guys have touched on this previously, but uh, you can, if you want to uh, uh, explain about it later, if there's any questions. Uh, but for now, we will get the activity this way. And the request code is simply just the code that you get back when an activity result returns. So all you need to do really is to set it somewhere. So I will set it in the view model. And that's because, by the way, Google Pay, when Google Pay launches, it will launch on a separate activity, similar to uh, how you fetch all the information with the start activity, uh, activity for results or the activity result APIs. Uh, Google, the Google Pay payment sheet will launch on a separate uh, activity. And then once the user makes a selection or cancels that payment intent, then that will be returned back to the calling activity uh, through the on activity results. That's why we need the request code and, and the callback that Joseph is just establishing right now. Indeed, and uh, which I think leaves us with the only thing uh, to implement, which is what uh, Jose just mentioned, the activity result. So uh, shall we move to that? Let's do it. Let's do it. So to get the activity result, let's put it here in our activity on activity result and it has these three uh, functions request code result code and data request code is what we just specified so if you send the request code as the google pay one we just added it will return exactly as it is and you know that this is the activity result from what you needed before um, and this activity result has to be sent to the google pay component and the google pay component internally can uh, kind of like uh, de 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 decode it and to check whether the state of the payment is successful or not, which means that it needs to be sent somewhere here, which, needs that, which means that we need to add it somewhere to the view model flow. So let's do that. Uh, let's create, maybe, um, maybe let's see, let's start with the screen. So let's see how the how our component handles the activity result. Um, 
we call go to component. Ankit, um, yes, we will share the code after the session, both the backend code and also the, the app code. So what we need here, we get the Google Pay component and we handle the activity result. So we need these three parameters. So let's go ahead and add them. And to call this composable, definitely we need something on the checkout state side, as we were mentioning. So maybe we can create it. Let's call it activity result uh, data. I'm, I hope I'm not terrible with naming. And we need these three. So copy paste again. And we can hear. So uh, one thing to note is that this is an event which means it's a one-time event and you should take care especially with these one-time events to not handle them many times because if you do then uh, you could be launching the operation multiple times and you will get an error so the recommended way by google which i also got used to it recently is to put it in the state uh, as nullable and then when the ui handles it you inform your view model that you did handle it the view model knows it uh correct me Hussein, don't me if i'm wrong but uh this is what i what i think is the recommended way now so this is what we will do yep perfect so let's check it in here we will check if the state maybe let's do it like this state dot um should handle activity result and if this is not null then we call handle activity result and we pass to it the parameters and update. Yeah, and as we said, we need to inform uh, at the end, we need to inform uh, the UI that we are done. Uh, the FU model said that we are done. So maybe let's add a uh, method that will call it on uh, handle maybe. And that will be a Lambda that will simply be called when we are done. So we are done here, we call on handled and we need to pass it through the handle activity result. So we'll say on handled equals view model and let's create the name right now. Uh, maybe let's say activity result. And... All right, so I think we are done on the uh, screen side. We need to go back to the view model side. On the view model side, we need two things. We need to allow the activity to tell the view model that it got an activity result. And we need to allow the, we need to send the update to the screen, of course. And we need to um, allow the screen to tell the view model that it was done with handling it. So the first one would be to, I would say, mirror exactly this method. Jose, Jet is asking if Joseph is a good developer. What do you think? What would you say about yourself, Joseph? <laughs> uh, I hope that it's not a sarcastic question because that would, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not sure about uh, what, what what's the intention, but uh, yeah, I would like to think that uh, that uh, yeah that I'm decent. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you have think? to take a guess. Know. Seeing. Um... There's like, I think there's multiple ways of uh, assessing the, uh, the proficiency of a developer. And one of them that I personally look at is how, how let's say, how seasoned they are 
with their IDs and with their keyboards, with the shortcuts. And I have to say that for Joseph, while he was typing, I saw already three or four of them that I haven't used for a while. They have some of some others I haven't I haven't used ever. And so that to me, you know, says a lot. And so I'm not gonna give my my uh, my assessment, but it looks like it's somewhere beyond decent, I'd say. But I'll, I'll let you interpret that because you have the code yourselves. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Jeet, for the question. Um, Regardless yeah. of whether it's uh, ironic or not, we, we, we will not know. Thanks for Indeed. the question. Anyway. Uh, all right. So what we will do here is um, in the on-activity result in the checkup view model, we will check um, whether the request code is what we sent before. If you remember, we created this to launch the activity result. If it's not, then we can simply ignore it. If it is, then we need to send an update to the UI. So we will do that just like here. So also I copy paste quite a lot, which you can take it however you want. So we copy here and we... developer. <laughs> I, I definitely hope so. And we will need to send the Google Pay, uh, the activity result data. So we will need the Google Pay component data, result code, and data. So we already have this cached. So we can read it and we can send it in here. I usually don't like the it, I rename it, but uh, yeah, I think it's, it's obvious here what it is. Yeah, a lot of people use it as well. I mean that in the sense that it's familiar to, to most of the viewers, hopefully. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so we need to go to the activity, make the call here, uh, view model dot on activity result, and we passed with everything we need. And the final thing would be to create this function that we were missing. And what we do in this function is that we set it back to null so that the UI does not handle the event multiple times. And I think for, if I'm not mistaken, what is this complaining about? Check out state. Oh, that's strange. What's the issue? And this has to be now. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I think with this, we can move to, and I'm not kidding this time, to the final, final step we have, which is the final result. So hmm. we go back to these three and we implement them. And then we are completely done with our integration. So. I will, awesome. uh, do you guys need to, oh. Let's maybe don't. take one step back now that we have done a good yeah. number of things yeah. and, and yeah. talk about briefly about what we have done. So if you remember, Domi did uh, the uh, backend integration and that's something that when we started doing, when Joseph started doing integration on, on Android, that's the first thing that he retrieved from the backend. You can remember that's configuration about the payment that you're about to make. Uh, together with other configuration like the environment, for example, or the client key that you have configured in your in your dashboard, then uh, Joseph uh, instantiated the uh, components from the ID and SDK that are necessary to make the the payment uh, transaction, and then on the Google Pay end, we made initially a call again through the ID and SDK, the components SDK to determine whether the Google Pay was available on that device for that user. We are assuming that the, uh, the user can pay with Google Pay. And then we have done the final step, which is uh, issuing the payment transaction. Remember that when you do that on the Google Pay side, the Google, the Google Pay payment sheet will show up, the user will select the payment, and that will return an encrypted payload with the payment method back. That's why we are now looking at these three um, these three callbacks. And in fact, let's just clarify, Joseph. So these callbacks will be called once the 
the payment payload is already sent to Adyen and then Adyen responds back? Or is this receiving the payload that we need to send to the Adyen backend? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, this will technically be triggered at the end. So uh, whenever the payload is, the flow is completely done with Google Pay, we can receive three things. So uh, uh, unfinished can signal that the payment is finished. With Google Pay, I think if this is called, it always will be successful with other payment methods and not necessarily, um, which means that you have to rely on your back end to check the final status of the payment. On error can be fired at any time, really. Any Anything that happens, a user cancellation or whatever, it will trigger an on error. And on action, uh, in this demo, we don't really need it, but it's for additional actions. So let's say uh, Google, the Google Pay flow is done and we need to perform a 3D secure tool, maybe uh, authentication, uh, additional one, then you need to handle it in here. And the Google Pay component can handle that. Uh, so you can send the action to the Google Pay component and it will launch the 3DS2 challenge uh, or whatever is needed. But for this demo, I don't think we will need an action. I think it's it's not needed, but it's super interesting. So you're saying here in the on action method, if um, it, 3D Secure is needed, um, you would invoke once more the component, right? Indeed. So okay. you would have a method here just like we had the Google Pay that handle activity result, you will have something called Google Pay component dot handle action. And this one is necessary all by itself, is, is the only thing you need to handle the action, which means to perform a 3DS uh, challenge or to perform a redirect with some payment methods okay. or whatever additional action is needed. So uh, all you need is one component for this. Uh, and this is when we spoke about simplicity in the new uh, version. Before that, you would need, for example, for this flow, a Google Pay component, a 3DS component, and a redirect component. Okay. Uh, so right now, you only need one, really. Uh, cool. Yeah. Okay, so the last part is simply to show a text. And we've already done that before. So if we have an error, we update the UI state, we set a tech error text, maybe we set something like error Google Pay, and if it's finished, we set another text. Mm. Uh, random user, yes. So I saw your question. Could you maybe follow me on Twitter slash X? You see my handle there and um, drop me a note. I will be able to, or we will be able to clarify those questions at a later stage if that's possible, because it looks like um, there's some there's some account setup debugging needed. Cool. And with that, we are done with the Android integration. And the um, patience is is uh, going smaller and smaller. So I think <laughs> everyone is looking forward um, to that final stage in which we run the app. So why don't we give it a try? Let's go. We are going so, for it, Michael. So I hope everyone can see. I'll make it a bit yeah. larger here. Well, that works. And this could be a good thing. Yes, my emulator did fail, and it does that. So uh, let's try. OK, yes. Um, yeah, that's uh, what you get when you use a Pixel 2. So we have the button now. We saw the spinner before, and now we can press Buy with Google Pay. And this is it. The SDK is launched. You can see here the uh, email that we are using, the address. Uh, you can see the payment method. You can change your payment method. Maybe yeah, all he, of these test cards. Maybe here, um, what Jose mentioned before. So the fact that Audien is used as a gateway will actually show in the sheet all the Audien related test cards. Um, you can find more about it in our, in our developer documentation to see if your gateway, like Audien, supports test cards. And what is super nice about Google Pay for a user, in my opinion, is that uh, if you've never launched it before, the whole flow can be done in this sheet and you don't need to do as a developer any additional steps. The whole thing will be done here and you will get the final result, whether this is a new user or a returning shopper or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, 
so let's try to cancel it maybe i okay. changed my mind and i pressed cancel and we get the error uh, and let's try it again this time with a successful state so we go here we have our test account we have our test card and we press continue and it's done nice very nice hopefully uh, michael is as happy as i am now with the final result successful uh, we could i think there's one last step and that is checking the uh, the adding dashboard right to make sure that the payment went through yes wanna quickly switch back to my screen for that yep uh, hopefully it's that one it is so we can see that uh, there are a couple of calls already and this last one should be it's, oh, those are actually the API, API logs, I'm sorry. Let me go to payments. And we can see one minute ago, one single successful transaction, which is the one um, Joseph just did. So Isaac, as you can see, all those are test payments. So you can, uh, those are not doing any transfer of funds. So you can use those uh, during your development and, and testing phases. Uh, and again, as, as we mentioned before, you can also use test cards to test various um, error and success flows before you go live in production. Great. Nice, not bad. We had another question that I wanted to go to, and that is random user had a good question about how to manage the 3DS flow, especially if there's an additional challenge with dropping SDK. Uh, yeah, good question. With drop-in, you won't really need to uh, handle the 3DS flow on your own. It will automatically handle it for you, especially if you use sessions. Uh, you With drop-in, most of the times, you will only really need to launch drop-in and receive the final result. There is nothing else to, to, be, uh, to be done there. All right, thanks, Joseph. And we are getting now closer to the end, uh, especially because there were no errors. Otherwise, we uh, may very well spend another 15 minutes here. But just because we're getting closer, make sure to um, add your questions in so that we have time to go through them. Is there anything else that um, you wanted to include as part of this demo, Joseph, or are you completely done now? Um, not really. Maybe I would like to. Uh send a message or a request to anyone who is uh, hearing us, um, who is watching us now. Uh, so I hope you, you enjoyed the, the Android demo and I hope it was uh, understandable enough and simple enough uh, for you to use. But we always aim to improve our experience with feedback. And we ask our merchants to keep reaching out to us. Our products are open source. We are on GitHub. Uh, we, you have a direct line of contact with the developers. You can send any feedback you want. I invite you all to go try the library. It is in beta, but it's very close to what we will have on stable. And uh, the migration will be super simple if you uh, move from beta to stable. Uh, we will have more resources. We will have docs. We will have uh, lots of guides. And uh, please reach out on GitHub or uh, through if you are already a merchant uh, through your uh, through supporter or your account manager, and uh, we can help you. We're happy to listen to any suggestions. Thank you for that, Joseph. How can we get informed when when you go to a, a GA, to a stable version out of beta? Uh, maybe the easiest would be to subscribe uh, on GitHub to the project. I don't know if you, uh, I can sh we can show it now. Uh, Domi, if you go on your screen and write at the end Android on Google. Uh, GitHub, yes. This is it, and then uh, you can on the right, uh, you can see it uh, on the bottom releases. Uh, yeah, you can see releases. If you check inside it, you will see that the beta was one of the latest releases indeed. And there's an integration guide. This link is what you have open on the other side. And if you want to follow the releases, you can turn on notifications in GitHub. Uh, so if you go back to the main page, uh, to the yeah, and click on notifications you will get uh you can I'm follow the releases in. yeah indeed and then maybe press a star while you're at it so we have one more star thank you 
All right, maybe then let's take a one last set of questions. Uh, we have a question from random user who has been like great supporting us today, by the way, and asking really good questions. Does dropping support a theme in light and dark status bar, etc. Yes, it does. And in V5 especially it does. Um, it will, it should be compatible and you could uh, do the themes however you want. However, keep in mind that drop-in is built with XML. So the themes are still in XML and you will need to override them that way. But of course, if your app is composed, you don't, you can still use drop-in, but only the theme over overriding the themes needs to be done with XML. Thank you. And one question from Richie, are recurring payments supported using the flows presented today? The answer is yes. Uh, that's something that will be additional configuration on your payment transaction with your PSP config. Uh, do you know from the top of your mind, Joseph, uh, what params or, or where do we need to look into to establish or to enable a recurring payment uh, with the flow that we did today? Uh, when you send the sessions call, there are two parameters. I think one of them is called recurring processing model, if I'm not mistaken. And there you can say whether you want to allow uh, recurring transactions or not. Um, and yeah, if you want the API uh, documentation, the full API documentation as well, on the top uh, of the page, you have API Explorer a bit to the right. And this one has a very detailed um, uh, API. Uh, it's, it's a very nice uh, page as well. Uh, made by an open source tool as well. And uh, uh, you can here maybe check sessions on the top. Uh, and now this is the class. Yeah, if you go to the very top of this page uh, with the, yeah, here on the checkout, you get a payments and that should include sessions. Yes. So here you have a full view of all of the parameters you can do and you can search for whichever you need. And um, one of them would be a recurring. A lot of them would be about recurring, to be honest. Uh, I'm not sure what each one does, but there are stuff like enable recurring and there are stuff like uh, recurring processing model. And these are all documented. Uh, so you can find them in the documentation. And this is, yes, this is what I was talking about. So you can send stuff like subscription, card on file, uh, and these ones will, yeah, will determine what it is. But I have to check whether this is for cards only or for Google Pay as well. I think the documentation will uh, will explain that better. All right, thank you, Joseph, and thanks for the question, Richie. Hopefully, this answers your question as well. And I think with that, we can uh, call it a day and uh, and and determine our integration as complete. I think that was a that was a great effort. Once again, um, happy that everything worked, but uh, I'm starting to see that there's a pattern here. Uh, we're getting too many things working um, from the beginning. I'm not sure, not sure what to think. If there's yeah, any, there is, any form there of is some preparation involved, Jose. Do you think? Do we actually prepare anything? <laughs> ah, that will never know. Anyway, with that. Today's episode comes to an end. Uh, thank you to all of you who joined us remotely. Thank you, Joseph, once again, for being here with us and showing us how to make the most out of uh, Google Pay integration with Adian. And thank you, Domi, helping us drive the uh, session. We're in the backend hat this time. Last time you did Android, this time you're doing backend. Thanks for yes. the flexibility there. Multi-talented. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Also, uh, it was a really uh, exciting. Uh, Absolutely. Do let us know anyway if there are integration paths or topics that you really think we should cover in future episodes. We will invite uh, your favorite payment gateways to complete the Google Pay integration in upcoming episodes as well. So if you have suggestions on PSPs that you would like to see, uh, please do let us know in the comments and we'll, miss, we'll make our best to accommodate. We also have uh, public channels. This video will be published on YouTube. So you have the comment section there. We have an account on X. I, it will take me a while to get used to that name. Uh, but you can also uh, send us uh, thoughts in there. We'll be listening. Keep an eye on the Android Developers channel on YouTube because we just have started publishing shorts, including key takeaways and tips seen in earlier versions of videos like this. 
And don't forget to follow at Google Pay Devs once again on X for more content like this. You can find the link in the description of this video. This was live Google Pay integrations on Android with Google Pay DevRel and today with Adian. Have a great week. Until next time. Bye.